Hey, Ronnie Dahl, four wheeling at Western Australia.com, back on home soil, another episode of Modified from Western Australia. We have an FJ here, let's get the owner in. Hey Ronnie. How you going Sean? How you going? Good mate. Set up for touring? Yep, mainly touring. Um, when I first bought it, I stuck some muddies on it and bush bashed, did a bit of damage, you know, got it out of my system, but uh, now it's just touring really, just to get out and Get a boat and see yeah, okay. CWA. Yep, well that's the best way to learn, isn't it? <laughs> Sean, make model for the audience. It's a uh, 2012 uh, Toyota FJ Cruiser, uh, four liter V6, um, IFS front, solid rear axle, um, rear locker. Just a rear, no front? Uh, it's just got a rear. It's got um, a track, which is a, it's a off-road traction control. So if you flick that on at slow speeds, if you're crawling up rocks and it, and it lifts a wheel, which, which these do, um, it applies the brakes and sends the power to the to the wheel that's got traction, comes stock standard. The later models have a uh, crawl control, uh, but this one's the 2012, which doesn't have it. What type of bar is that? It's a uh, opposite lock, a uh, steel winch bar. What's that thing here? Uh, that's my air compressor. Ah. That's where I plug my hose in. Very neat. So, so the air compressor sits up here, and it's got a braided line that runs down to here. Okay, and they got a cap for it. Yeah, they got a cap. So they've finally done a cap for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're the only ones it's to a do a slightly, cap for it. It's a slightly different um, connection to the usual, is that it's it's down, and then when you plug it in, it pops up. It's slightly, ah, slightly so different. It's like a reverse engineering. Yeah, so it comes with a bracket, so you can place it wherever you want. Which compatible bar? Yep. And you've got an Ironman winch? An Ironman 12,000 uh, pound winch. Um, Dyneema roll, factor 55. That's yep. a recent addition. Yeah, these are cool, hey? Yeah, it's awesome. Not only do they look cool, they are actually very practical. Dash plate. Yeah, so that's that's a uh, four mil aluminium. Oh, alloy. Yeah, it's alloy. Um, I got that made up by a guy in uh, Wangara. I've got bush skins uh, underbody protection, and I used to have Iron Man, which were useless. They just completely disintegrated. Uh, first run. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> so when um, when I got the bush skins, I didn't have anything to fit. So there is bar work that comes with this bar, but it just wasn't compatible. So I had to get this made up and I just decided to get alloy just for, just keep it light. It's, it's, and it's, it's very strong, it's bolted here and here, so it's under tension, so it's very strong. This bush skins, how far does it go in? Uh, it goes right back down to the, uh, just past the gearbox. Oh, yeah, it's a long one. About halfway back. Yeah. yeah, the long skid plate. Yeah. Is that a steel or alloy, that one? That is steel, three mil steel, I think, yeah. or four mil steel. Well, at least you got the weight low. Yeah, it's, it's heavy, but it's, it's bloody strong. Rock sliders. They are um, from Southern Cross Fabworks, um, heavy duty from over east. Um, the old sliders, I had, I had factory Toyota sliders, they were strong, but they were useless because you couldn't stand on them. Not Too close to the body? Yeah, they, they came right in here. Ah, oh, yeah. So they did protect the car and they bolted onto the chassis instead of around it, but you couldn't stand on them. So yeah. you spend the whole time with the two doors open, walking along the car trying to tie stuff or you know so now I can actually stand on it and put stuff on the roof which has just made a huge difference I didn't want to get a, a flat step and I didn't want an aggressive rock slider so they're kind of a, a good, yeah with a bit of an angle too kind yeah. Of. yeah they're strong you can jack the car off them if you want rear bar for the FJ you don't see too many FJs with a rear bar I gotta say yep but it kind of makes sense because you're limited on storage right yep so you've got 40 litres of water 40 litres of water yep a spare, spare wheel which will normally, normally sit here, right? It normally sits on the back door, yep. Yeah. Pretty heavy. It kind of really matches the, the trim, doesn't it? Yeah, the Kmart, I had an ARB rear step, which is just a step. Um, and I had a couple of issues. I had three of them with powder coat issues. And oh, yeah. eventually just said, I don't want another one and went to the Kmart. Okay. So a huge difference in this car is having the water outside the car just complete game changer because they take up so much space and when you're going a long trip you want to have a shower you want to cook and clean and whatever you know you you want to bring 20 40 liters yeah, depending yeah. on how long you're going and to have them in the back takes up a heap of space mm. and they're, they're quite awkward to tie inside a car as well and awkward to get to awkward to get to you got to pull them out put them in they're heavy so you got you want to have them behind a cargo barrier you want to have them really strapped down mm. so um having them back out here just complete Game changer, really. I suppose you've got the option of fuel as well. This bag kind of looks a bit recognizable. Yep, and that'd be Nathan. 
Ah, so yep. it's PM Canvas. PM Canvas, yep. He made that up. Um, there you go, Nathan, another plug for you, mate. Yep. No, he was br uh, brilliant. Um, went to see him, and this one's slightly different. Um, he added this strap on the back. So that, that top Velcro can't be fitted, obviously, when you have the Max Tracks. So he's added a strap around the back, as mm. well as the two links. So yeah, awesome. I'm really happy with it. He did a, he did a brilliant job. Shovel cover as well. Oh, wicked. To keep the rust off, yeah. Yep. So that's a good thing about you know people that make custom stuff is they're willing to make changes when you make changes to your car. I mean, we make changes all the time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> so you got four Max Tracks there. Yep. So uh, I had, I had two, 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 that, two that I never used, so I decided to buy two more to oh, yeah. use. <laughs> Put the fresh ones on the outside. <laughs> when they went on sale, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a work light. That's the standard Kmart telescopic uh, work light. That's, uh, fire extinguisher at the back here? Yeah, just a small fire extinguisher in there. It's just easy to get to. So I got one there, one in the front, and one in the drawers. Uh, the stock tank is 73, and the rear tank is 120. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you nearly got 200 litres. Nearly 200, yeah. Awesome. So your range is pretty good then? 1100 Ks, 1200 Ks. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, they are thirsty, but. Yeah, it's it's aerodynamics. It's brick. You know, it's, <laughs> it's flat windscreen. And... <laughs> I can name a vehicle that's worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> Roof rack, the ensuite. Yep. So before we roll this out, because this is so quick, we can basically roll it out while we're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yep. Rhino rack, uh, the Pioneer platform. It's the narrower version available for the FJ. Oh, it's a deceivingly short sh short shovel. Yep. I was expecting it to keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a Fisker's shovel um, on Yakima. I got Yakima shovel holders. So you see everybody has the twisty rhino racks. The Yakima, if you just squeeze them and pop it, oh. um, you just pop them open. Oh, wicked. And they're lockable. That's, um, yeah, that's good. So it's re really annoying when you have to thread the shovel out and back in yeah, or whatever. Well. So at least now I can put my awning out and I can still take the shovel off without having to try and take it past. I think we'd better put a link for this because I think a lot of people yep. want to know because I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the other side, you got the, is it a, two, that's a 270 awning? Yeah, yeah, the Alucab um, Shadow On 270. That's right, Shadow On. Yep. So I just replaced, I did have a Drifter 270. Um, we got a dog, the drop down poles, you know, and him running around with a with a leash on. Just okay. weren't, you know, he was just gonna rip one out of the ground or he's gonna damage it or, you know, so at least when it's freestanding now, he can Oh, that was your reason for swapping. Yeah, that was my reason for swapping was we That's an expensive dog you got there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the awning was more than the dog. <laughs> so um at least this way I can crack it open, he can chill out beside the car and he's not gonna he'd be in shade and whatever. You know, yeah. we can relax a bit, you know. He's my partner's baby, so. <laughs> Let's get this out. Yeah. How old's your dog? Uh, eight months. Eight months. If you haven't seen one of these yet, if you have a partner that must have a shower in the bush, this is how you get them out there. At a it's a bit um, so awesome. They're awesome. The narrow rack obviously doesn't help, but uh, yeah, we we do a lot of bush camping, and we mm -hmm. got a little twelve volt shower, a little pop up bucket. We did have the pop up type, and then I had one with poles, like a string, and then I got a June one with hard poles, and it's harder to put up than our tent. So yeah. you know, it's just so now everybody has a shower at the car. So you got a zip on the inside, um, so you can put a flap down. So the reason I have it here is that. Um, I can put the window down in the car. Um, put your so you can hang your and towel and your clean clothes and whatever, zip it up, have your shower, you know, zip it down, reach yeah. into the car and then get whatever you need. Lights and comms. And before we get to your lights, I'm gonna start with your comms because you have three attachments on the bull bar and you have no antenna on the front. Yep. I noticed it on the back. Yep, got it down the back on a, um, on a mount just off the back door hinge. So it's sitting up a bit higher. S too, sitting it? up a bit higher, mm. out of the way, not in my field of view. Did you have it here before? No, never. Okay. All, always back there. You, what's your range at the back? Uh, it's four and a half dBi antenna, so really don't know. I've got a short one, long one, longer one to oh, fit so you, to it. So can I can, change, I can change them over, yeah. You just screw them off and screw them back on. Okay. But in terms of distance um, and stuff, it's not too bad? I've been in um, Durian Bay and a mate of mine was 20 k's up towards Sandy Cape and I was picking him up on the way, so 
flat open road is pretty good. Yeah. I just like to point out that that is probably the better spot to put it yep. as well. Onto your lights now, have you changed your headlights? Uh, they are just a Philips uh, Ultra Vision um, 110, I think. Um, Which just makes it whiter or? Yeah, just, just a brighter light. Um, what do you think of these? Awesome, absolutely love them. The only thing that gets me with these is, say I was down Market River last week, driving at night, um, when you're driving and you have the spots on, on, on an open road and you come to a bit of a bend and you hit a big sign, it's just like getting someone's high beam <laughs> straight back into your face. You yeah, know, it's yeah. really, really intense. Yeah, you're talking about the HIDs? Yeah, the HIDs, yeah. yeah. So, you, so you probably got to flick them on and off, but you yeah. know, I'm just probably a bit lazy. You are right though, like really bright lights in an area like Margaret River where there's signs yeah. and stuff everywhere because there's a lot of civilization, yeah. they do smash you back in the face. Yeah. And I do tend to turn mine off, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, bloody good light, I agree too. Any other lights you're going to get or this is enough? No, this is it. I did have the 240 Blitz and I waited for two years to decide what I was going to do with lights and I had bought some light bars and just sold them on Gumtree and gave them away and I think that if you just get one good set for what I do, mm. um, so I got these on the front and I got one work light on the back Okay. and that's it, you know, less wiring, less switches, less everything. Last question about your lights. Yep. If these only had LED or, or spot, would you then have another light? Uh, potentially, yes. Tires and lift. We have Mickey Thompson. Yep. MTZ Spudger. Yep. P3s. These um, are the P3s, yeah. Yep, late 2016. Yes, yeah, so I've had them for a year and a half, maybe. So how many K's have you done? Because this isn't your daily driver, this is no. just your adventure yep. recreational yep. vehicle. I've probably done about 20,000 K's on them. And like you said, it's 20,000 K's. Most of it is... You've done pretty good for 20,000. Off-road, on the beach. I run them 36 PSI, front and rear. I've got to say, they look brand new still. Yep. Um, still got your fuzzies. So got the fuzzies on the side. That's probably actually the reason that one looks good is that's a rotated one off the back. Ah, okay. So we picked a good tire. <laughs> we picked a really good tire. Uh, Size-wise, so 17-inch rim. Yep. Method. NVs. Method wheels. Yep. So they're a zero offset. So before, you had negative 13 before as well. Yeah, I had negative 13 steels. And like I said, with the tires going out around, I was having a lot of issues with wheel balance. So every time I'd air down and air back up, it's like I had square wheels. So that was um, steel wheels? Yeah, so I wasn't sure if it was the steel rims or the tyres. So as it, to eliminate it, I changed the rims and then I still had the problem and then changed the tyres. 285, 70, 17s. Yeah. So I, I had them on the stock rims as well mm -hmm. with, the, with a three inch lift. And you haven't done a body mount job? No. You don't need to? It does rub a little bit, obviously. Uh, it rubs a little bit. So I've trimmed off the, um, the mud guard because mm. it will catch, it'll catch the mud flap. Okay. So the negative 13s, um, because I've got upper control arms in the front, I was able to set the caster really far forward uh, yes. so I wouldn't catch. So yeah. there's a lot of adjustment in the front okay. with the upper control arms. So um, that gave me the option to get it in the wheel alignment really, really far forward, mm. trim the mud guards, and it was just just getting past. Okay. So if you're, if you're on an FJ and you want 33s, take note of that kind of stuff there because that's the kind of stuff you need to know. Yep. To get these tyres of fit. Suspension then, what lift are we sitting on? Uh, two inch lift, uh, all man emu BP51s. That's a two inch? That's two inch, yep. Wow, it kind of seems a bit taller. No, it's a two inch lift, um, 200 kilo constant weight sp springs in the rear with airbag man airbags. Oh, your airbags too? Yes, yeah, so I got the airbags as well. So I got them with my last suspension when I had. So I had soft springs in the back because I used to take everything out. Um, so day to day driving with the, with the softer springs, it, it was really oh, nice. When it used to be and a daily. Then, yeah, yeah, when it used to be my daily. And then when, when I loaded it up, what I do is I'd pump the two bags. So I pump them individually, load the car, then let the air down to just settle the car back to, okay. to what it was meant to be. Because you see a lot of cars driving around and they're, you mm. know, lights facing in the air, it's probably not, it doesn't <laughs> drive very nice. So I suppose you set up a towing too then, you, you put a trailer on, increase the air. Yeah, yeah, if, if, the, I, if I want to, I can nice do level. that as well. With your BP51s, how long have they been in for? I would say 12 months, 12 months. Cool. About 15,000 k. How, how do you like them? I love them, absolutely love them. Yeah. The front sway bar spacers, 
um, as well to drop them down to match the lift. The upper control arms in the front and I got a heavy the Cam duty. Camberg. Camberg, yep, yep. So from the States, you can see that one says passenger side. So all band EMU, BP51s throughout and then you've got your custom control arms and stuff. There's a lot going on there, but it all serves a purpose. Yeah. Power plant time. Before we open it, I was about to say, oh, I see you've done this to stop reflection from the light bar you don't have on the roof. <laughs> yeah. So what is this for? Uh, it's just for glare. Uh, the flat bonnet. So you've got a flat windscreen and a flat bonnet. Uh, without this and a white car, if you're driving in the sun, say in the morning coming up here, or driving east, yeah. or driving home in the afternoon, or in the middle of the day. It reflects like just, a mirror. It's just bright. Really, really bright white glare right in your face. So this just tones it down. Fair enough. So it's made a big difference? Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, huge difference. So it's just a matte black 3M wrap. I think you can buy them pre-made, or you can get guys that'll just fit it for you. You know what they should do? They should make a wrap that's, that's like a solar panel. Yeah. That's what they should do. <laughs> All right, let's that's have an a idea, look. ideas, man. So the full leader. Covered in inox. Yeah, it looks very shiny. <laughs> Some puddles of it. That's someone who takes care of the um, engine bay. Two batteries. Yep. Which this is the main. This is the main. So this is a oh, yeah. this is a ninety-five amp hour, um, seven hundred and twenty, cranking, and that's an eighty-seven amp hour AGM gel battery. Two batteries total in the vehicle. Just two batteries, and then I have a thumper, a fifteen amp hour thumper pack. It only weighs about four kilos. Real small, and I can just take that round, use for the shower, use it for camp lights and whatever. Ah, that's a good Put it in idea. the tent, charge phones, yeah. you know. It's really, really good, small. Is that light. in the back? Uh, it, it's just mobile, so I just take it cool. around. I don't, I don't have it in the back with me now, but um, oh, I we'll, usually we'll carry it. We'll throw a photo up of it. Yeah. That's, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah, it's an awesome little bit of kit. Your horns are a bit yellow. Yeah, they're just the Hella um, dual tone horns. Um, my front horn went a bit average. It was okay. dust or mud or rubbish or water oh. or whatever, so I just changed them out. Um, Is it a bit more of a masculine sound? Uh, it's not really, it's just it's the it's the, the pitch. So when you beep the horn, if you're close to the car, it really gets into your ear. So you really not, it's a high pitch. Uh, so this car will be charging system for the electric, so here you have a projector. Which... It's a, an IDC, a DC DC charger, 25 amp hour. So you can do and that, solar input as well. Yeah, so that Anderson just there beside it is for the solar. So I got a SeaTech battery sense on both batteries, so that's Bluetooth to your phone. It tells you when it's charging. It doesn't tell you the discharge or anything else. Um, okay. So it's pretty basic. So just tell you the voltage. It'll tell you the voltage and that the battery's good and it's in good shape. Oh, that's probably most yeah. info you need anyway, really. Yep. Uh, what else is going on with the engine bay? Um, we have ARB compressor up here. That's the breather for the winch. Um, that's pretty much it. I got a breather for the winch. Yeah, so the Ironman 12,000 winches are IP65. Oh, they're so sealed. They're, they're sealed, completely sealed. Okay. So they come with a breather. So Do they get hot that. when you run them? Um, no, like I said, I was, I'm in a four wheel drive club and one of the guys, Gav, has a huge, really heavy 100 series cruiser and he has flogged his Ironman winch and he's put it onto his comp truck now and it's still... Oh, it's on his comp truck? It's on his comp truck now. Must so be, he, he's, had, he's had it for a couple of years and now he's put it on his truck and it's mm. still going. So I, I bought that after mates who have big heavy cars who do a lot of four wheel driving, use them a lot, have okay. had no problems. So I did have a, a, um, a cheaper winch in there before. I've got to say your electrics are actually pretty neat. Yeah, it's real basic. So if I do have a problem, it's real easy. You just check the fuses. I can check the line the whole way back, and if I need to, I can check the earth. So it doesn't take long to yeah. um, to sort stuff. Which With electrics, simple is good. Yeah, real easy. That's just a Boab. Ah, you got the mesh around yeah, the... Yeah, a Boab uh, bug net, which goes the whole way down. A Boab bug net? Uh, a, a bug net. Bug. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. it's like, you know, these people have the mesh on the outside, around the front of their car. So this goes right down. If you look in the bottom, it goes right down to the to around the bottom, oh, of, the, the bottom of the rad. Alright, I'm so, gonna have to look for one of those. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really good. It's just got a couple of um, That's a great elastic idea. points and hooks. And if you want to clean it, all you've got to do is reach in and give it a few tugs because it's on elastic and it, and it just everything falls out. The uh, last thing I'm gonna ask you here, I guess, is where are your diff breathers? Uh, the diff breathers factory already up high, so I don't oh, have diff yes. breathers in the front. The FJ. Yep, they're, al they're already up. 
at mm. the front. So the, the rear diff breathers and the locker are up to the fuel cap. We'll open the back up, eh? Yep. Ah, something I just want to point out. So you get easy access to your water. Let's have a look at this table first. That's the table, right? Yep. Oh, wow. Look at that. Bottle opener. That's water. pretty cool. So is this custom or? No, that's a front runner. So they, oh. make, they make it for a Jeep. That's so a it's, South African company. Yeah? yeah, yeah. So it's got a um, stainless steel brackets just on the back. So uh, yeah, it's good. It will just about fit the stove, but we just kind of, I, I set it up high. So I have this thing about when I'm camping, being over to small tables all yeah, the time, yeah. it drives me bananas. So this is about as high as I'd like to do it with the jerry cans. That's, um, that's a good point actually, because the most camping tables you get, just roll off on for me anyway. I'm like, I'm yep, like, you're bent down yeah. all the time. So this is kind of counter height. We have to go back on. <laughs> that's pretty good. These clips, there's no, uh, there's no like screws or moving parts. They're just really, it's just a stiff steel, so it doesn't actually move. Oh, you clamp. So clamp it. I have no real fear of that. What's the question? If we open this table up. Let's give it a pull. Yep. Does that interfere with the fridge? Uh, no. Thought about it. I can't open it all the way, but I can still uh -huh. get in, unpack what I need. Okay. And close it back up. So it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty So big. did you ask for a gap there? Yeah, so the gap is there because the fridge stays in a lot of the time. Uh, the gap is there, so when it's plugged out and turned off, and I clean it out, it stays. <laughs> so I just leave it like that. All right. So it gets fresh air, so I don't have to worry about mold or whatever. Trying to catch me out in a cheeky question here. He's got an answer for everything. <laughs> I could put my solar panel up there, I think, if I wanted to. I could slide it in there. I just got a, a fold-out solar panel if I'm really stuck oh, for space. Oh, okay, yeah, because I forgot to ask you, because you had a solar input. Yep. So you have a solar panel. Yeah, I just have an 80-watt um, projector fold out panel. Is that the one here? That's just, it's just sitting in here. Okay. Cool. That's it. Pretty light, pretty easy. Yeah. And just makes use of a bit of a, a dead space. Well, let's roll through the top. Yep. So this cooker. Yep. Actually, I recognize the bag. That yep. is a, a drifter. Drifter bag. Bootliner bag. Actually, I recognize all the drawers now. Yeah, yeah. Drifter. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we get to the drawers, the cooker, is that a gas mate or a Primus? Uh, companion. Companion. It's a, it's a three burner as well. Three burner with a toaster. Oh wow, a toaster underneath it? No, no, it's got a flip down toaster. Oh cool. <laughs> you have this track up here? Yeah, that's just, um, if I got anything heavy and hard up here that I, I like to just throw a strap over it. So I, I got a heap in here um, of uh, tie downs that run through here. And I can just throw a strap over. I do have the cargo barrier, stop stuff going forward, but side to side if you're out, if you're doing something a bit rough. It's good to have it. You don't want to lose a window or... What's in these bags? Uh, that's an Oz tent uh, table, a fold-out table, and that's two chairs. There's two chairs in that bag? Two chairs in that bag. Wow. Uh, the, the big long, when, when you fold up long chairs, they're hard to pack. Okay. So that's flat. It's about the size of a laptop bag. So it can live there or in the, in the back. Or that is really intriguing. Side. What chairs are they? Uh, front runner. All right. We'll pull them out and we'll throw an image up. I want yep. to see what the chairs are like. Yep. We use them for Q&A, how about that? Yep, easy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, the, the drawer system, let's have a look. Before we do anything, this table. Yep. The slide out table. Do you use this table more like this or do you actually pull it out and use it? Always like this. Always like that? Always like this. Um, packing the fridge, unpacking the fridge, making lunch. You know, we've got two tables here, which makes it real easy. So, I mean, if you were having a few drinks by a campfire or whatever, probably probably take it out, but haven't haven't taken it out yet. Yeah. I mean, it's heaps of space. I just want to emphasize to people how good a, a pull-out table is. You know, like an aluminium one, like I have in my setup, or, or like this. This is this is great, even for loading your fridge. Yep. I take okay, it and use it. it. Yep. You're not trying to haul everything. And... Yeah, you can stack all your beers here, and, and if you're doing a big trip and you do, you know, we got a 47 liter fridge. Um, I want to get like an 11 liter freezer, but you got to pack smart. Mm. 
which means you probably have two goes at packing usually. Mm -hmm. If we're going a long trip and we've got like cryovac meat and stuff, it's at the bottom um, and you have it really cold, it might start to freeze. You have to unpack a fair bit of stuff to get that out to put it on the top yeah. if you're having it that day. So it's good to have this so that you're not putting stuff trying to dirt. hold everything or putting in the dirt or, you know, it's, yeah. it's awesome. And quick lunch stops. Open it up, um, take whatever you need. And then sometimes what I do as well, if, if I take everything out and I run out of a bit of space here, so if I'm making, say, wraps, I'll put some stuff up here. So what do we keep in this drawer? This one is lights, um, stubby holders, axe, there's a fire extinguisher, tools, peg bag, tire repair kit, jump leads. Um, there's a socket set here and a tool roll underneath. You can pull this out completely. Yeah, I can take it out completely. Um, mm. that's, that, that's probably the only re the only time I've had that table out, actually, was in Coral Bay, I blew a power steering hose. Um, and you take the table out and then took the bottom drawer out to get access to my jack. So you just... Okay. That's probably the only time it's come out. What's in your second drawer? This is the kitchen slash pantry, really. Um, I noticed that's deeper than the top drawer. Only slightly deeper. Um, these drawers usually come with a, a big bottom and a, and a small top. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I asked for this height is that you can stand stuff up. Uh -huh. So even the taller cans of brake cleaner or electrical connection cleaner, yeah. you can actually you can stand stuff up with, with a small drawer. My last drawers were, were, were shallower, so you get a bit more space on the bottom. Do all your pots and... That's a snow peak percolator. What's the pink thing? Ah, uh, it's a light. So this is um, JTS, so it's orange or white. So that's good, we got an Oz tent, an RV4. Um, so you can just clip that onto the poles out the front and that, I run that off that smaller battery. This, cool. this here is anything that doesn't really need to go in the fridge. I got another one of these. Anything that doesn't need to go in the fridge, we just stack in here. Oh, so like canned food, things Can, like that? Canned food or wraps or anything like that goes in here. Um, this bag, when you're finished with it it, it, it folds flat. That's cool. And it's got hooks, so if I really want to. So all this calorie came with the front runner thing? Uh, it had steel, uh, these two are steel. Uh, it had a different knife, this is, a, this is my knife, it's got a sharpener built into it. Okay, so uh, you, you changed some of it, but it, came, it does come with It calorie. comes with everything. For a condensed rear, there's a lot going on. And it's well thought out too. Uh, also noted that all the stuff that you have in here is quite compact and um, yep. and lightweight too. Yep. E everything's small, light, easy. And anything um, that's bulky, kind of, it, it's the stuff that just needs to be bulky. Yeah. So you've gone for the smaller chairs, you've gone for like all your cutlery in that one thing. It's compact. That's all my plates and bowls. Oh wow, I thought that was... That's my chopping board. Yeah. Two cups, two glasses. All your foldable stuff. This is very important. Piece of kit. What is that? It's my milk frother. <laughs> for my coffee. Um, yeah, everything is. I got a jet boil in here. Um, so camping gear with hiking gear. Yeah, pretty much. I, I've kind of leaned foldable towards gear. anything that folds or collapses or. Interior time. Let's start with the back. So you've ripped the bottom of the back seat out, but the other... I've left the top in. The top in, yeah. Yeah. Um, Is that because when you fold it over, it takes up too much room? When you fold it over, it takes up too much space. And to remove it and put it back in is an absolute nightmare. The bolts on the either side is a nightmare. Uh, oh, so I did it once yeah. and I learned my lesson never again. So I just leave them in now. Confined space. Yep, <laughs> it really is. Um, and it was on a hot day. So you put a bit of plywood here. Yep. Obviously your dog still can sit on it. Yep. Uh, we it's it's good because it's flat. You can fit a bit more in. It's got tie downs on it. If I put the Weber in there, I've got a baby queue and I, and I strap it on there. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just way easier. So when you travel solo, this is this your tent? Yep, that's my um, bunker, jet tent bunker. Um, that lives in there. Oh, um, same one that I've got. Yep, just the older model. Cargo net. net. Yeah, it's just a Boab net. Pillows and, and jumpers and towels and mm. other bits and pieces. And it's kind of a dead, you, you only ever really fill to here. Mm. And then you kind of got that gap, but that at least you can you can use that space. 
but only light stuff. I mean, you, you really oh, yeah. don't want to put anything heavy up there. First aid kit, highly visible. Yep, that's just held on with some Velcro. So if you just give it a... No, rip it off. Yeah, just yep. rip it off. Oh, here's your recovery bag. I was yep. going to ask you in the back, and I figured, well, we might see it in here, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it here, either here in that footwell or in the back. So I got some choice, I got space mm. either side of the drawers. It all depends on what I'm doing, really. So you got seat organizers on the back. Yep, that's head torches, knife, uh, the blow torch for lighting the fire, um, torches and whatnot. And then this side is just, you know, your sun cream deodorant, bug spray, yeah. match fly spray. Bug spray, bug which spray. we used earlier. <laughs> all right, so in the front here, let's we'll start up here. You got uh, our back overhead roof console. Yep. What radio is that? It's a Uniden. Oh, Uniden. Yep, it's just a 40 channel. Oh, your handset's um, up there. Yep. How do you find a handset up there? That's where I keep mine. Uh, when I first had it up there, it was a bit dodgy. I used to just keep it down in my hand. Yeah. But now, I've, well, I've had the car three years. It's been there for three years. I don't even have to look. I don't have to, and it's right there. That's the speaker, yeah. it's right in your ear. The only yeah. thing I've found is when it hangs down, it's like a wrecking ball. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Or when it falls down. Um, is, that, is that standard for the FJ? That's standard, yeah, that's a compass. Um, just your temperature and then an in, in kilometer. I think people have started changing these out for gauges, for like water temperature and oh, okay. more useful stuff. They're a 53 mil gauge, just fits in. Well, onto the cliff hanging yep. dashboard. That's how they described them when these first came out, all the, <laughs> all the motoring experts. Yep. Uh, so here's your A-Track, your rear diff lock. Rear diff lock, traction control. That's for the spotties. So I got light bar or spotlight, parking sensors, compressor. I mean your LED. L or... LED, um, air compressor. And that? Fuel tank, rear fuel tank. So that's a, that's to switch the pump on and it's got a gauge in it. Oh, okay. And this is a voltmeter? Uh, no, that's a tr uh, throttle controller. Oh, yeah, okay. Because there's a, it's a, um, an iDrive uh, throttle controller, there's mm -hmm. a, this lag um, when you push the accelerator before yeah. you go, and that gets rid of it. I did have it on auto when I went to Coral Bay. Don't put it on auto, because you can be overtaking going up a hill, and you're just giving it a little bit of boot to get past, and this thing goes, oh, you've, it's just like you've mashed the accelerator to the floor, and it'll just take <laughs> off, honestly. So I just have it in ultimate zero, and it's, it's perfect. Okay. Is this an iPad mini? iPad mini on a RAM mount. Yeah, so that's got um, HEMA maps. Another RAM mount. Yep. Okay, I keep hearing good things about RAM mounts. Yeah, I got the X mount here for my phone. Oh, and I've got another RAM mount up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, are they worth the money? Yeah, they are awesome. Absolutely awesome. That's what everyone keeps telling me. Yep. I'll just um, go shut up and get one. They're just, they're, you know, they're, they're real easy and simple. That's a rescue me. Oh, a seatbelt cut and a... Oh, wow, that's pretty cool, actually. It's, it's a con the condensed version. Yeah, see, so you just uh, push that black thing against the corner of your glass. And mm. So I got one here and there's one there. So you don't need a big... I don't want a big orange hammer. Orange hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the bus hammer. Yep. Are you serious? Yeah. That comes with the car? Yeah, well, if you imagine, I can't fold this one round, but if you imagine if you fold that round, it only comes to here. Oh, yeah, okay. And then that, that fills up the gap. Interesting. All right. Never noticed that before in an FJ. Oh. That is pretty handy. Just need something to catch the, the yeah. bottles. I've got to say, I don't normally drink bottled, bottled beer. It's a Q and A. Right, well, let's mix things up a bit. We missed a few things going yep. through the vehicle. Exhaust is one of them. Yep. It's cool. got a, um, a Dirty Deeds or BA mufflers exhaust, uh, cat back from the States, and just a, a side exit over the back. I think it's two and a half inch. So it's good. It's a bit droney, but you know, get over yeah. it. Yeah. Well, if you want the noise, yeah, it's going to yeah. be droning. You just got to deal with it. <laughs> snorkel, we didn't cover that either. TJM, uh, AirTech snorkel, uh, nice and neat, you know, safari one. Mm. Goes down the side, that one's a bit tidier. I've got to say, your vehicle, I can tell that you've thought about the setup quite a bit now. You feel you're at a point now where everything's good? Yeah, I, I think I'm pretty much finished. Um, uh, pretty much oh, finished, Well, that, that's, that's my, uh, in perspective, Third set of rims, second set of tires, third set of suspension, 
fourth bar, second exhaust, yeah. you know. So I, I think I've I've tried it, hasn't worked, um, and now I'm pretty happy, you know. It's it's it mm. works for us. We live out of it. We don't treat it like a caravan, but you know we're able to park up and everything's pretty close. And it, the thing that got me is I don't want to have to move stuff to get to stuff. So now I don't have to move stuff out I've of my no, way. I've noticed that the way yeah. you set the car up is. is I don't have I don't really have to good. rummage through anything. If I want to get something, I can open a drawer and I can grab it mm. just straight away. So that's the the main thing for me. Let's wind back. How many years ago till the car was kind of really set up? Like when it was first set up. Um, three years ago. Okay. It had a, a lift, uh, 8022s, a barrel winch. All right. Let, let, let's go back to that moment three years ago when you yep. went camping, and then compare that to when you go camping now. Yep. As in like ease of access and enjoyment. Yeah. What do you say it's increased by? Yeah. I I, I reckon 200%. I used to just get stressed out about having to pack the car, you know, having the jerry cans out. I mean, mm. that was massive. Um, yeah. Being like, I to, for us to go away now, we pretty much just put food in the fridge, put the tent on the roof, and throw our bags in the back, and and we're gone. Whereas before, it was a week beforehand. I had to think about where stuff was going to go. You know, the 47 liter fridge is too big for this car. So in the last set of drawers, it was east west across the back. So I had no space. Ah. At the top. So I couldn't put anything in there. So everything had to go on the back seats. Yeah. So you, know. so you pretty much, it's like you had three different cars then. Yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> much, yeah, yeah. One thing you want to change, money's not an object. Uh, I'd probably put a supercharger in it. And that is only because- Money's not an object. Money's not an object, but- In a hypothetical- In a hypothetical thing. world, but- Maybe potentially a re-gear with the 33s and you know just to okay slightly sluggish slightly uh, the, 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 trot, the throttle controller is, has, uh, is different it's got plenty of power but um i think a rig a rig gear when you're off-road and stuff you know you kind of don't mm. have first gear now and um, when you're in low four it's ah, of course and it is auto as well yeah it's an auto mm. so potentially a rig gear just to get the fuel economy back as well your three favorite mods on the vehicle currently the rear tank originally having 73 liters 400 k's maybe if you're lucky so you're planning everything 400 kilometers at a time and yeah. you're carrying fuel jerry cans which is okay in most countries but not here not here no <laughs> so you know especially first, in wa yeah first trip up north you know i was the one who was stopping so now we all, all all the guys that i go with we all have the same kind of range yeah which makes it easy <clears> because you know it's kind of you don't want to be that guy who's stopping at every servo so now we can all pretty much drive to canarvon in one go if you stop in a servo, it's 25 minute operation every time you want to do it, you know. But <laughs> when you re realistically, because then your mates come in yeah, and they want to go to the, the toilet, toilet and then they want to go to the shop and then get an eating, ice cream, get a pie. pie, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then you, yeah, so on the phone, yeah. you always get that one bloke on the phone to his missus, yep, it's like get in the car, mate, <laughs> let's go. Worst part about the FJ, uh, the size, <clears throat> it's bad and it's good. What are some of the tips you could give people? The stuff that we didn't really, that not necessarily how the vehicle set up, but like tips for you when you, you know, you're tucking things away and things like that. Um, yeah, I got my compressor hose under the passenger seat. I got my um, recovery blanket under the driver's seat. Um, you know, make use of these little corners, you know, find stuff that you'd, you, you might need, but you're not really going to need. You know, if you really need to get it, you can get it. But if there's little corners or gaps between your drawers or even behind your back seats and your drawers, there might be a gap, you know, that might be somewhere you can put something that you might not necessarily mm. use all the time, but you want to take on your trip. Um, tools, I have a, a socket set and a tool roll with, with some gear in it. And if I can't fix it with that, I can't fix it. So I don't lug okay. around a huge set yeah. of tools with me. Um, yeah, fair enough time, too. So. And the weight as well. Yeah, well, I'm not a mechanic. Tools but and metal. I can, I can go so far, but I just bought an FJ 2012, yep. vanilla white, and I caught up with you at the shops. Yep. Because I saw you on modified. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Painted a big scenario here. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, what should I do to my car first? Uh, 2012. If you don't have a long range tank, get a long range tank. That's the first thing. Yep. Um, and then some advice I got that I didn't follow and I ended up wrecking my rear bumper is sort your bar work, sort your front bar, sort your rock slider, sort your mm. rear bar and, and protect your car. And I got told that and I went, oh yeah, yeah. And then about a month later, I slid back off a big rock and wrecked my exhaust and rear bumper. And you've dented the side and before And I've dented too. the side before as well. And yeah. I, had it, I had it 
all scratched up and you know when I got it repaired they fixed up a lot of stuff. <laughs> What's your top trip? The best trip you've done? Coral Bay and Exmouth in March last year. Uh, whale sharks made that trip just, just okay. topped it off. Uh, the coastal track we tried to get we tried to get to a few places we didn't make it to the whaling station and stuff we couldn't get over the dunes it was just me I had nobody else there so I wasn't going to tackle too much but uh, yeah I love Coral Bay. Um, and Exmouth, I just, I just, it's a really, just a really nice spot. Well, thank you very much for bringing the FJ. No worries, on. thank you very much. And if, look, if you have any more questions for Sean about his FJ, just put them in the comments below. You'll get on there and answer them. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like to know more about the FJ as well, um, there's a, I think it's up in that corner, might be this corner. There's a link there, and you can subscribe right here. And if you'd like to support the creation of content like this or any of the other series or videos, just right up there and watch this other modified video somewhere on the screen. Hopefully not covering one of us in. <laughs> Cheers. See ya.